eight in 10 Democratic voters say that they want a series of debates among their party's candidates for president. This is according to a new USA Today Suffolk University poll that includes 72% of voters who say they've already chosen to support Joe Biden. Among respondents, 58% said they would vote for Biden in a primary, 15% for Kennedy, 6% for Marianne Williamson, and 21% still undecided. Meanwhile, the New York Times put out a new interview with Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s wife. The Times writes, quote, Cheryl Hines, the Curb Your Enthusiasm actress, is beloved in Hollywood. Now she's supporting the presidential campaign of her husband, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Is she normalizing his often dangerous ideas? Journalist in front of the show, Lee Fong, commented on the Times framing, quote, how is this news and not an op-ed? Glenn Greenwald tweeted, this New York Times article on RFK Jr.'s wife, the popular actress, Cheryl Hines, is so revealing. It's essentially saying, of course we must expel RFK from all precincts of decent liberal society. He's opposing Joe Biden. But is there a way we can let her remain? Yeah, this uh, article in the Times is insane. <laughs> um, so? It's, uh, like Lee, I, I agree. I mean, it's not quite right for an op-ed, but it it is so much, it is so agenda driven. It's not straight news mm -hmm. at all. Um, yeah, the title is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. wants to be president. Cheryl Hines is along for the ride. The idea for this article is a good one. It's, it's absolutely, there's always reporting on, on candidates' uh, spouses. Sure. Um, the story of how they, I think it's a second marriage for both of them mm -hmm. and how they met is interesting. Um, Cheryl Hines herself, her, Career trajectory is interesting. I, I understand that she was a, a somewhat minor um, actress until her really big role in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, but this, this article, and, and there's a lot of good information and detail along those lines in this article, but it is all framed with what do we do with this person who's likable Hollywood star married to someone who we think is so despicably dangerous unsafe in what he thinks about vaccines. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the subtext Is she of the, normalizing his often dangerous ideas? And the subtext of the, of the article is, if we like and respect and still include Cheryl Hines, is that su suggestive of the fact that some right. of the worst things that have been said about RFK Jr. are in fact not true? Because the, the, the media fact, wants to yes. present him as being unfit for polite society. And the fact that, one, he's a Kennedy, and two, that he's married to a, you know, well-liked, popular Hollywood actress and is very much in the liberal club, in the normal liberal club, undermines attempts to uh, attack his credibility. And you've seen the attacks on him also fall along those two lines, because I think that people who are opponents of his know that they have to, to, to make him seem like a persona non grata. So a lot of the attacks have been, well, he's a Kennedy technically, but his own family isn't supporting him. So don't, don't feel too comfortable with him just because he's a Kennedy and he's familiar to us as a nation. And also don't feel too comfortable with him just because someone that you like and respect presumably loves him very deeply and has chosen to share her entire mm -hmm. life with him. Right. And, and she doesn't, uh, from reading this, you don't get the idea that she objects to his views in general or even on vaccines. She defends him in the article saying, you know, if Bobby is standing up and saying, well, are we sure they're safe and every vaccine has been tested properly? That doesn't seem like too much to ask. That seems like the right question to be asking. Um, and it just, it, it, it really flummoxes the New York Times yeah. that she would dare say that, that sure. she would dare take this position that they think is, is like as bad as being a Nazi. Yeah. What do you do about a person who is, Cool and nice skeptical. and friendly and, and pretty, but has this one view that we associate with Nazis. Yeah, and plus also the, well, this not the, the, they, the, that we say the, is as bad as the most sure. evil, horrific thing we could possibly put together. And, and for better or for worse, vaccine skepticism is very popular in a place like California, not with respect to the COVID vaccine in particular. It just used to not be but, so polarized. It used to be, there used to be plenty of vaccine But they were skepticism. liberal. They right. were liberal moms who are, who are affluent, right. who maybe felt like their kids should be treated separately and more special than others, and, and also who might have some sincere concerns about some of the vaccine schedule. You know, and so it's, there's been a political sure. shift where, frankly, that kind of skepticism was right at home in California where these people are living. And now because of COVID, the political 
um, subtext has changed so much that it, 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 we're in this dissonant period where people are trying to figure out what to do with it. Right. But I don't want to completely miss the, the first part of this uh, segment that we talked about, sure. which is that eight in 10 Democrats want there to be a debate. They want Joe Biden to have to stand on a debate stage with RFK Jr., Marion Williamson, and whoever else might throw their hat in the ring, um, including even, even though most of those people are, say they're going to vote for Joe Biden, they still want him to have to engage with these other two and their ideas. It's worth noting that Chris Christie also has been given a CNN town hall, despite polling at 0%, 1% in the race. Marianne Williamson, who has polled as high as 11%, has not been given that same kind of opportunity. And she went on Fox News recently to discuss this question around the, the force the debate movement. Let's take a look. Could we be talking about someone else rather than the people who ran last time? The American people, the whole point of a representative democracy is that it's supposed to be the voice of the people. So the, traditionally, the, the role of the, of the um, political party is to stand back in a primary season, let the voters decide. And as you said, the, the majority of Democratic voters want to hear from someone besides the president. The president should not just be shoehorned in for the nomination by the DNC, as you're indicating. And that's yes. why I think it's important that the president debate uh, both of his challengers. Uh, and it, I look forward to it. And I'm it, glad it, that so many people seem to agree. All right. Yeah. So she can get that kind of a hearing yeah, yeah, on yeah. Fox News. Yeah. What's going to happen? No, and, and there's, there's no argument against doing a debate at all. Uh, there, there's no argument against doing town halls. If CNN is doing town halls with Nikki Haley and Chris Christie, and you know, they're going to go down the line of Republican nominees, and that's fine. And Donald that's Trump. appropriate. And Donald <laughs> Trump. That's appropriate to do. And then just pretend Marianne Williamson and, to some extent, RFK Jr. don't exist. They're pretending, they're mostly pretending Marianne doesn't exist, maybe throwing her a bone every now and then, and then they're pretending RFK Jr. exists to the extent that that is a horrifying thing for them <laughs> right. to contemplate and needs to be stopped at all costs, right. um, as evidenced by all this uh, by all this commentary on Cheryl. How could she be married to someone who's yeah. this, this evil? It is also worth noting Again, would they that— ever write, Would they ever you know, write a profile of Jill Biden and ask whether she's comfortable with the dangerous ideas her— like, he said things about vaccines that ended up being wrong in the other direction. Yes. Like it's only and it's all only kinds going of in foreign direction. policy uh, opinions Absolutely. that are more directly linked to real death and horror all across the world. Absolutely. So you know, I, I think that's fair. Or, or his busing opinions about uh, segregated busing in the yeah. 1970s. You know, that little girl was me. All of all of that stuff. Have we ever asked mm -hmm. Jill Biden to account for that? His odd statements about uh, lifeguarding at a swimming pool and the black kids liking to pet his blonde leg hair. I mean, Joe Biden is full of cringe statements mm -hmm. that uh, Jill Biden has never been asked to respond to, or obviously the Me Too allegations against Joe Biden, which extend far beyond just what Tara Reid has uh, accused him of. So I, I think that is all legitimate and true. It's also worth noting that some of these independent um, platforms that many of us think could open up the space for a genuine democracy outside of the control of both of these corporate parties have also not been especially friendly to Marianne Williamson, uh, uh, Elon Musk represented that he would have Twitter spaces for anybody who wanted one. He did have one for RFK Jr., despite him running as a Democrat. He's gotten a lot of mm -hmm. support, support across the aisle. Marianne Williamson responded to that exchange saying, yes, let's do a Twitter spaces as well. As of now, it's not forthcoming, and he we'll see if there's any pressure for him yeah, to do so. Yeah, you should absolutely do one with her. You know, we have her on um, often and talk to her about her efforts to run for uh, the 2024 nomination. And I'm excited to say we are we are going to—I know we've been teasing an RFK <laughs> Jr. interview. We are making that happen, and we'll have that um, coming up pretty soon. I'll have more details for that uh, in the next day or so, and we'll have more rising right after this.